What's up guys, I'm Ambrosia Carey. I am here to show you how to start placing ads on Facebook using your laptop. So let's go ahead and get started. So first I'm gonna start out from my account and I'm just going to click here over on Ads Manager. Now, as you can see from a previous ad, it's actually showing me uh, some stats and this is kind of what you're gonna expect once you've run an ad in the first place. So I'm gonna show you from scratch how to start your own ad inside of Facebook and you can actually link it to your Instagram and you can go straight from Facebook or you can go inside your Instagram directly and do an ad from there. But the thing is, is you have less options inside of Instagram than you do inside of Facebook. So I'm gonna show you how detailed you can get involved with this. So right here, I'm gonna just say click campaign from the green button. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on that. And now it's going to give me some options here. Uh, it's gonna say, okay, are you gonna to wanna to raise some awareness? Do you wanna bring traffic in? Do you wanna increase your engagement? Do you want more leads? Um, promotion or sales and so in this situation I typically am going to be wanting to bring in more traffic so if I click off to the left hand side you can see where these are these campaigns that I've done in the past so what I'm really looking for on the layout with this is you've got campaigns off the left hand side your ad sets which is right in the middle ads which is the main piece that you see off to the right hand side and everything kind of gets stacked over the top of each other and the column section off here to the right it's going to give you some options on it's going to give you a default of performance or you can actually change what you're looking for like if you want conversions video engagement carousel engagement that sort of thing so this is for the details of the overall performance basically and then you can see here is the breakdown of the time, the delivery, and then based off of your action. Now I'm gonna go here to the create button in the green and I'm gonna click on that and it's going to give me the option of what I want to do here. So if we are in a place where we just wanna raise awareness of our business to people and wanna get more eyes on that ad, clicking awareness is always gonna help in the very beginning. And then you can get a little bit more specific after that. It actually tells you even here like what it's good for. It's good for reach, brand awareness. This is good for video review, post engagements. And if you actually hover over some of the other pieces, it will tell you what those are kind of designed to do for you. So in this situation, I just wanna raise awareness. So I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. After this, we're going to name our campaign. So under the campaign name, this is just something purely that you're going to see yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and enter in what my goal is, which is awareness, PDX marketing. And I'm gonna add in just a date for reference, October, 2022. All right, now categories don't apply here and you could read more about that, but that's mostly for like housing, lending, social issues, that sort of thing. So you're gonna scroll down. Now in the campaign objectives here, it does already say awareness because I clicked on the earlier. You can always click on more options here and it's going to give you even more options. Uh, let's see, campaign, uh, campaign spending limit. So the campaign spending, spending limit, you can actually edit this piece and you can add a spending limit on here. So if I wanted to click on this here, I could say my spending limit is going to be, I'm gonna put $100. And in this situation, if you scroll down, you're gonna see there's an A-B test. Now, whenever it comes to an A-B split test, it's a really good idea to actually toggle that on as an option, especially when you first get started because you're going to have different, uh, it's going to look different on different platforms. And if you're gonna to choose to do it on Instagram and Facebook, you wanna optimize that as much as possible. So you wanna do a split test so you can see which one performed better than the other. Then you kind of know in the future what kind of campaign you wanna run in the future. So now we come down here a little bit further and we get down to the campaign budget. This gives me an option to do a, a daily budget or a lifetime budget. I'm gonna go ahead and say daily budget and I'm gonna change my daily budget to just $5 a day. It's going to actually divide it down for me and it's going to go all the way up to my, my spending limit. So it's gonna give $5 a day for that ad to run until the life of that ad runs out and then I'll get my results. For the ad strategy, I, I do actually have an option to put it on highest volume or bid cap in this situation. This one shows me that I get the most results for my budget, so I'm going to have go ahead and just keep it on the automatic settings, which is the highest volume. Now that we set everything, I'm gonna go over to next and we're gonna go into our next portion of setting up this ad. And now we're in the ad set. Remember I was showing you earlier how it's broken up into three sections. 
The ad set now is going into more the details of the actual ad itself. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave the name that actually it types in for me, which is new awareness ad set. And the Facebook page is going to be directing to my hair page here on Facebook. All right, next up is Dynamic Creative, and this helps me optimize my audience, but we already set up our optimization, and we're going to go a little bit further into that, so I'm gonna leave that off. The budget that I'm going to actually set is for a future date. I don't want to actually set up the ad the day that I want it to go for, because Facebook has to approve it, and then I wanna make sure that everything is set if I have to adjust anything. So I would wanna set it for the following day. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, and then um, you can set up an end date if you want to, but again, I already have a cap on it, so it's going to stop. If you want, you can go into your ad if it's not performing the way you want it to after a few days, and you can always turn it off if you wanted to as well, but I'm not going to set an end date. I'm gonna just let it run until the very end of the ad space time. And then we're getting into our audience. This is the place where we can actually create a brand new audience or we can retarget an old audience. Or if we've done ads in the past and they've gone well for us, we can actually just go to our saved audiences. As you can see here, when I switch on to this, I have the option to go to US hairstylists, something that I've done in the past for a hair tour, which is all over the country, uh, color correction when I was just trying to gravitate new color clients, or industry bosses where I'm focusing really on the marketing side where I'm talking to salon leaders. So in this situation, I'm gonna go with US hairstylists and I'm just gonna keep the ad as is. Now that I set that up, you can see the next one down is in placements and this one is actually recommended by Facebook because it actually does set a budget that helps you show your ads to more people and it delivers and allocates it based on what it believes that is going to like you. So people who already like your stuff, it's going to show them to similar type audience. So I'm gonna leave that on. And then remember that my awareness piece here was reach, so I'm gonna keep it on that and the cost per result goal uh, we could enter that in, but we already have a bid in there, so we don't need to worry about that either. So now I'm going to go to next. And actually, one thing that I didn't mention here is that if you actually look at your design audience, so if you go here to this portion, it's important to me that I am having more eyes see it because it's awareness, right? Like if my goal was to focus on my salon specifically and I only wanted to target people in my surrounding neighborhoods, then I would want to get that as specific as possible. But in this situation, you can see it's green and I'm more in the broad spectrum and that's okay with me because I wanna raise awareness and this is for my coaching and course business. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next on that. So here we have the ad itself and then it shows, it's verifying that Ambrosia Carey hair is attached to the Facebook and then I have my Instagram account that's also attached here. So yes, that is correct and I'm going to accept that. I wanna create my ad and I'm gonna use a single image or a video. I could do a carousel if I wanted to. You can go ahead and pre-select some graphics that you've used in the past and it will give you some suggestions based on traffic that's already come to desirable posts or you can create a brand new one. To save down on timing, I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and just show you the process. So I'm gonna go into add media. I'm gonna add an image and it is advised to use video from now, but I don't have a video prepared for you guys to show you. So I'm just gonna go through a previous picture. So in this situation, I am going to go ahead and click on an image that I already have saved in here. I'm gonna click on next. And you can see that it's giving me the ratio of how things are gonna look depending on what it is that I want. So I can arrange these if I wanted to crop this, let's say to the right and move that down, the orientation is gonna correct itself depending on the feed that I want. So I'm gonna say done, everything looks good there. So I set up that image, it's ready to go. And now if you wanted to add music, you can, I'm not going to do that. My primary text right here, it started to auto fill something in already and that's not something that I want to have there. So I'm gonna to wanna to put something in there so people have an idea of what they're going to get here. So in this situation, I wanna bring traffic to my website. I do have a freebie that I offer hairstylists and what I'm going to say is get access to our membership page 
for free. So that's a nice little hook. It's letting people know what they can expect from it. And obviously in this situation, it's letting them know that if they click on it, that they can get access to something for free. So this is a nice way to lead people in. In this situation, I don't wanna change anything as far as the languages go. It's already set to English, so I'm just gonna have it off. Now, having an ad pixel is really important for your website because this allows you to check your conversions later. As a matter of fact, if I'm leading stuff to my website, I want to see who's clicking on it, and this enables you to be able to retarget clients later. So if you had a salon website and you were targeting potential clients to your website, you definitely wanna keep track of that by having a pixel installed. And what that means is that you can just see where conversions are coming from and who's clicking on what. That way you can retarget those clients in the future. So right here, I already have my website attached to it. And if I click on the website events, it actually does run it through. So that way I can see in the future where the stuff is coming from. You can actually set up a URL parameter that is definitely more on the advanced side. And quite honestly, I'm not comfortable enough with showing you guys yet how that works, but it is something in the future if you really wanted to fine tune where that traffic is coming from and you wanted to get very specific, you can click on the URL perimeter here and you can see where you can type in where the campaign source comes from, your medium campaign, the name of it and the content that you want and then you can apply that. For this though, Again, I only want to raise awareness, so I'm not going to worry so much about fine tuning all that stuff. Now, if I wanted conversions and I wanted people to actually click through and purchase something, this is where I want to fine tune a little bit more because you are paying for that cost per click. The last thing I would do here is I'm just going to click publish. And once I do that, it will send me to a porthole basically within Facebook that says that it's being evaluated for approval and it typically wait, it typically takes anywhere between 10 minutes and an hour, like it just depends. So that's how you set up a Facebook ad. You can definitely get more involved with it. I would still advise you to do it through a video since it's really pushing video. Videos you can get super creative with Canva. I, I do have a couple of extra places that I like to grab video from as well. You could obviously use something like Canva if you didn't want your face in it or you wanted extra graphics put in it. There's another place called placeit.net that you can gain free videos that you can get access to. Again, it's not gonna be curated to your brand. So if you want to get creative with it, I would say take a shot and try it out with Canva or shoot your own video that you're introducing yourself to your future client. This is a really great time to offer a freebie if you have something available like that. And in the meantime, play around with it, set it to a low dollar amount and just see what happens. Try different things, always do an A-B test. I would always advise you to go inside of Facebook and do your ad from there rather than going from Instagram. But if you're one of those people that doesn't like to use Facebook or if you don't have your Instagram attached to Facebook, you can certainly set up an ad directly through Instagram if you choose. Hopefully this helped you guys out and you're able to start creating. Let's go to the next video.